Honestly, I was scared that by the time I got to volume two of these NES Switch games, that there would be way more games to choose from. Unfortunately, there's not. Thanks, Nintendo. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Throwback Thursday. Happy Thursday. If you're new around here on Thursdays, we go back before the year 2000 to talk about the media of old. And today, we're going back into some more NES games. A couple months ago, we did our very first episode of the games featured in the NES online library for Nintendo Switch with six games that released back in 1985. Well, today, we're going to be jumping into 1986. It's important to know that while the Nintendo Entertainment System did release in 1983 for Japan and 1985 for North America, it actually wasn't released to the entirety of North America or Europe until 1986. So by the time that everybody could get their hands on the console, there were already quite a few games on the market. In fact, there was a total of 37 games available by the end of the year. And here in 2019, only 11 of those games are playable on the Switch. I'm not salty, I'm not salty. We talked about six of those in our last episode, so now let's go over the five that was released in 1986. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about any sports games this time, so that's dope. First up on the list is a game that probably everybody's played, and that's Donkey Kong. I'll try not to talk about this one that much because I did cover it in my Wreck-It Ralph video games episode, but basically, Donkey Kong is a game. You play as the first appearance of Mario, or Jumpman as he was formerly called, as you try to rescue your girlfriend Pauline from the evil Donkey Kong. You jump and climb your way to the end of each stage. Now this is the NES version of the game. You can actually get the arcade version on the Switch Store as well but that's a ridiculous $7.99. The difference between these two are that the arcade version actually gets much more difficult in later stages compared to the NES version. Donkey Kong was definitely one of the more advanced arcade games back in the day, but now it's only worth playing for a few minutes if you've never played it before. And honestly, as an amateur Nintendo scholar like myself, I've spent more time learning about this game than I have playing it at this point. Now, last time we did talk about Super Mario Brothers, but the first official Mario game was Mario Brothers. I'm not quite sure why the release order was the way it was for these two on the NES, but both Mario and Luigi appeared in their first game together in this arcade title that's also a game. That's right. Unfortunately, a lot of these early NES games are just very basic, but at least the gameplay in Mario Brothers is much more engaging than something like NES Soccer. In Mario Bros, you play as Mario or Luigi as you jump and headbutt turtle and crown-shaped enemies, pick up moving coins, and run through pipes while trying not to die yourself. It's a fine game that's entertaining enough for a few minutes, I guess, if you don't have anything else to do. But at the end of the day, its sequel, Super Mario Bros, was a hell of a lot better in every single way. Taking a nosedive into the only game this time that's objectively bad is Balloon Fight. Balloon Fight is pretty much like Ice Climber in the way that, yeah, it kind of works, but also it's not fun. You play as a balloon, get this, fighter, with two balloons attached to your head. Your goal is to pop other fighters' balloons before your balloons get popped. Now, there is a two-player option, so this could be more entertaining if you're playing with a friend, but I'd have a hard time believing that you would have any more friends if you asked them to play balloon fighters with you. The problem is that these controls are just a little too wonky. And like, let's be real, I, I just don't care. It's just not a fun game. At least the music is good. Next up on our list of NES games is a game that can be considered fun, I think, Ghosts and Goblins. Now I say it can be considered fun, and like, Ghosts and Goblins I guess can be legit fun at, at times, but I, I don't know how much I can say that this is a good game. Developed by Capcom, that's right, this is our first third party game, you play as a knight named Sir Arthur who has to fight his way through monsters to rescue Princess Prinprin, yes that's her name who has been kidnapped by none other than Satan. I guess somebody in 1985 Capcom decided to get a little edgy, apparently. This was also an arcade game first, which, let me tell you, that sounds 
awful. Because I can't imagine playing quarter after quarter after quarter to die on the first level over and over and over again. Ghosts and Goblins has this neat little mechanic where if you get hit once, your underwear shows, just like real life. But if you get hit twice, you die. Again, just like real life. I've only ever beaten the first stage like once and that was a few years ago. So I obviously didn't have the patience or the time to try and capture that again for the recording. Uh, fortunately, you can use save states for the Switch, but I still don't think it's worth it. After you make your way through the first six stages, you beat the final boss and that's it. You've beaten the game. I'm just kidding. This isn't a common sense video game, guys. No, no. Now you have to beat the entire game over again to get to the actual final boss at the end of the game. I wish I was joking. Pairing the fact that enemies just spawn out of nowhere, there are certain items that you can get that act as if they're upgrades, but they really just make your weapons worse. Some enemies are actually hard to hit, and half of the time, you're gonna see Ignite in his undies, and that's just gay. At the end of the day, Ghosts and Goblins is a game that's maybe worth playing for a little while, but I would not recommend actually trying to beat it. The last game today, and the first Konami game in the NES library, is Gradius. Now, this is the only game in today's episode that I would definitively argue is actually worth playing for more than 30 minutes. I'm not saying that it'd be easy to beat, it's actually pretty difficult, but it's definitely more fair than Ghosts and Goblins, that's for damn sure. Gradius is the first entry in a long-standing series of space shooters by Konami. It also started as an arcade game. Its main gimmick is a weapon bar. As you shoot enemies down, power-ups are available to be picked up, which shift the cursor on the weapon bar over until you choose an item. Once you choose that ability, the cursor then gets reset, giving you the ability to pick and choose any weapon on the bar at your leisure. Now, I've never gotten too far in this game either. I actually prefer its sequel, Gradius 2. I know, who would have saw that coming? A game called Gradius 2 is the sequel of a game called Gradius. But even then, Gradius is a solid NES title that actually deserves some playtime if you like bullet hell or space shooters. It's fun. If you have the patience, you can actually get good at it. It doesn't have the unfair randomness of most difficult games from this time. And the music bops, too. So as you can see, 1986, not a terrible year for NES games. Most of these were definitely better games than we talked about in Volume 1. I would argue that Gradius is the only game you should actually play out of this bunch, with Balloon Fighter being the one that is a complete waste of time. The rest are fine, and honestly, you've probably already played them before anyways. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Awesome Creator Academy. YouTube and entrepreneurship is not easy. It's a long road of trial and error, hard work, and perseverance. But things can become easier if you get yourself into a mentorship group, and this is where Awesome Creator Academy comes in. I've personally been a part of the Awesome Creator Academy group for over a year now, and not only has it helped me be better focused and make more realistic goals, but it's put me in a place with other creative professionals that want to succeed just as much as I do. It's a place where I go to share my successes, my failures, and everything in between, and I highly recommend it. For $59 a month, you get a ton of value. You get access to private Q&A sessions with entrepreneur Roberto Blake, exclusive training videos and resource lists, early access to templates and courses, group mastermind conferences, and my personal favorite, access to a private Facebook group with people who are working just as hard as you are. Check out the details in the link below to get started, and if you do decide to sign up, you'll be helping support your everyday nerd. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for whatever reason you didn't like the video, you can hit that dislike button. Stay tuned for volume three of the NES Switch Online Library. We'll be going straight into 1987 entries, and then I'll continue going year by year until we hit 1994, the last year that the NES was supported. Then I'll go back and pick up any other games that I missed. Hopefully Nintendo gives us more games than like the 30 something that we have right now. If it gets to the point, where they actually do give us like SNES games or anything like that, I will cover those in a certain, in a different series of, of episodes. But anyways, go ahead and subscribe for more Everyday Nerd. I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.